قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أهل القرآن لا توصدوا القرآن واتلوه حق تلاوته أناء الليل والنهار رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم has mentioned O people of Quran this Ya Ahl Al-Quran we have done this before that this is an address of endearment of love and um, closeness uh, to show that a person who has embodied himself with the qualities of Quran to such an extent he has made himself from within the people of Quran then Rasulullah says La tawassadu al-Quran do not take Quran as your pillow. This is the literal wording of the of the hadith, and we are going to discuss about that aspect as well. What luhu haqqatilawatihi and recite it uh, the the way giving its due right of recitation. Ana al-layli wa nahari in the portion of the night as well in the day. Understand before we talk about before we talk about other aspects, any when we are trying to decipher and understand these wordings from Arabic, from Ahadith or from Quran, then we realize that there are two different ways of approaching them. There is going to be an apparent the the literal meaning of the wordings. And there is going to be a metaphorical meaning um, or a uh, orfi meaning. Um, the, uh, for, uh, one usul that we can keep in mind, when the literal meaning of the statement is acceptable in Sharia, as well as it's implementable, as well as there is nothing contradicted, then that will always be accepted. The orfi meaning can become a means of understanding that statement um, by way of orf, by way of culture. For example, we have um, uh, phrases, proverbs and things like that that are with, uh, available within any linguistic sense. So when we have those, um, although the meaning will be taken on their metaphorical sense, um, but at the same time their original meaning will also be given credence as long as there is nothing there to uh, to prevent us from taking that meaning so before we look at the orfi or the cult uh, cultural meaning of this word let the wasadul quran don't take quran as a pillow let's look at some of the literal aspect of it and see whether it is uh, showing us some etiquette something like that for us or not Upon the apparent meaning, uh, it says it, it would mean that it is not permissible to place the Quran as a pillow. A pillow is placed under your uh, uh, head or um, along with your arm or something like that so that you can rest upon it and you can sleep away. This can be seen as a disrespect for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So right on the front, upfront, obvious nature, we realize that putting the Quran as a pillow for yourself is going to be uh, disrespectful for the Quran. Many of us, we keep on feeling that the disrespect for the Quran is something in the heart. If you disparage it in the heart, then it's a disrespect. But other than that, it's just a book. And this is why you would notice many people disregard and dis uh, dishonor the book itself, not even realizing that the act that they are doing is in fact showing disrespect for the Quran. I present one hadith that comes in Shamail of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Tirmidhi rahmullah he has mentioned in his sunan as well that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would greet or would um, receive a guest in his house, uh, he would show three qualities. And these three qualities, all of them are the, uh, the mechanism of showing respect to the guest. What are these three qualities? Number one, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not remove his hand while making musafaha with the, uh, with the individual until the other person has actually taken his hand back. Similarly, the second one would be that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not turn his face away from the guest until the guest has actually moved his face away. 
And the last one, the most important one is, the hadith mentions that he would not advance his knees towards the guest. This advancing of the knees to, towards the guest itself is a uh, proverbial meaning to mean to stretch the feet towards them, right? To, to stretch the feet towards the, the, um, uh, the, the guest. This is how Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was showing his respect for the guest. To show that these are anchors, these are um, actions that display the respect. Now we can simply say, what's, what's so uh, problematic about putting the feet towards the guest? I mean, he's, it's, not, it's not like um, the, the guest is somebody who is so muazzam and so mukarram that we cannot put the feet towards him or anything like that. But it shows that when the host, he empowers and endows that kind of azma, that kind of respect and honor for the guest, he is going to show this kind of respect. If this is the respect that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is showing for another human being, then we can start to imagine that how the respect towards the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the mushaf, the book in which that kalam has been written down, how much respect sh we should be showing towards this book. It is important that we look th through this simply because many of us, we do waver and we do uh, misunderstand this concept of respect for the mushaf of Allah. Uh, what happens is many of them, many of our people, they keep on saying like, oh, um, why, do we uh, why do we need to show that much respect towards the book? The main purpose is to read the book. And we have been over the year emphasizing all these aspects where we say that while it is definitely significant and important that we display the respect towards the Quran by actually reciting, reading, understanding and uh, following it at the same time outward respect for the mushaf of uh, uh, mushaf and kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not void of significance as well it is a common habit among the people to downplay to to disregard the mushaf uh, and this uh, among the fuqaha is disliked these are some some of the actions of, uh, over here i have mentioned that normally happens dragging mushaf like a useless item i do not mean dra uh, nobody drags the mushaf on the floor but dragging uh, uh, you know holding like this and um, uh, ca carrying the book uh, uh, like uh, carrying it waving it wa walking away as if like it's just a normal any other book Every normal book is supposed to be given respect because it is a mode of understanding and mode of learning. So, Quran and Mushaf and Kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deserving of more respect. Our Asatiza, they used to teach us to put the Mushaf against your heart because you want the Mushaf to be as close to your heart. It will show you or it will show the respect for the Quran itself. Some people, they open book and they start flipping through the Quran frantically, trying to find the page, like in, as if they have no sense of respect for the pages of the Quran. Use dignity, use decorum to open the book and pick, pick out the page which you have to read. Putting it on the floor, putting it on the feet, or even worse, extending their feet towards the Quran. These are all actions of disgrace and action of um, disrespecting the Quran. Similarly, uh, the one mentioned in the hadith, using it as a resting pillow. Imagine you put the Quran as a resting pillow and just sleep on top of it. Somebody may, may say from his romantic gesture of something that I hold so Quran so close to me that even through the sleep I'm holding it together, uh, holding it by myself. But we realize as an outward act, it may per be perceived as something by few people, but by general uh, people, it will be understood as a disrespect for the book. I give normally two examples, one or two examples to understand this concept. Uh, put, uh, it has come to a, le a level where uh, our times uh, putting the feet towards our parents or something like that is not seen as something disrespectful. But I still say, let's uh, 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 let your child go to his mother and put his feet on top of the face of the mother. Are you going to think that this uh, the child of yours is actually disres disrespecting the mother? If you think that he is not disrespecting the mother in doing this, then you need to revise the, the nature and the definition of respect. Because definitely putting your feet towards the mom's uh, mother's face like that is disrespectful. And uh, the child needs to be made ta'adib and shown the right way. Similarly, imagine your uh, child putting your, his foot on top of the 
uh, the food item that he is about to eat you're obviously going to rectify the child's behavior by telling him that it is incorrect to do such a thing similarly we understand the fuqaha, fuqaha have mentioned and i have given the, all these uh, references for anyone who wish to look through it uh, places where the quran cannot be dishonored put in a position of disregard ibtizal kind of uh, put, uh, putting is in a disparaging position all of these uh, fuqaha have mentioned that it is not permissible some have said it is not permissible while others have said it is haram to do something like this this is the the zahir the the linguistic or the literalistic meaning of the hadith let's look at the orfi meaning or metaphorical meaning in a metaphorical meaning it would be a kinaya the, or it will become a, like a proverb a saying uh, that don't make your quran as your pillow what does it signify it will show laziness towards the quran it will uh, the quran is there for you to utilize it meaning use it read it recite it understand it and implement it within your life instead what do you do you put it in under your pillow and you sleep away that uh, the sleeping away shows a ghafla right it shows a ghafla being oblivious being distanced from the actual purpose of the quran so in orfi sense uh, uh, the wordings of rasulullah would mean do not put the quran uh, away and forget about it rather use it daily from day and night uh, uh, remember what the quran is to be done you are to recite it recite it in the morning time recite it in the uh, evening time for ibadah uh, it would it would be completely dis respect in that sense towards the Quran that you are not going to be fulfilling the maqsad of it that is to be recited that being said <clears throat> The hadith continues to show an indication towards this metaphorical meaning as well. It says, وَطْلُوهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ And recite the, uh, uh, by giving its due right of recitation. أَنَا اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ In the portion of the night and the day. Showing that you, this is the kalam of Allah. The kalam of Allah is not to be put into the shelves. The kalam of Allah is not to be uh, printed out or uh, put into the book form and everything and then gone, uh, go and put into the maqbara on some grave or or something like that and in in a virtual seeking benefit of the 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 spiritual level of the quran and musaf no this quran is to be recited this quran is to be utilized day in and day out give its due respect in the in the visual form when you're holding on to it when you're reading from it when you're carrying it all along along with that when you are reading it and understand what is within it and learn it and lead your salah with with it as well and implement it within your uh, lifestyle so that you can become part and parcel of the Ahl al quran this is the first portion of the hadith inshallah the next next portion of this hadith we are going to revisit it next week biiznillah may allah give us tawfiq and understanding to understand these ahadith to open our hearts to to the and, uh, to the secrets of these ahadith and and implement them within our life subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanakallah wa bihamdik wa nashidu allah ila istaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi جزاك الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته